Usually on Fridays, we're breaking down the game plan, what the New Orleans Saints need to do to topple their upcoming opponent. However, with Sean Payton now unavailable to coach this Sunday night up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, we're going to talk about what this means, who takes over the head coaching responsibilities, and who calls the plays for this Sunday's matchup. We got all that and a little bit of land yet for you on today's episode of Locked on Saints. You are Locked on Saints, your daily New Orleans Saints podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is good, Houdat Nation and Houdat family? Welcome into another episode of Locked On Saints, your daily podcast covering the New Orleans Saints, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks as always for making Locked On Saints your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget that we're free and available on all platforms, including on YouTube as well. I'm your host, Ross Jackson, at Ross Jackson Nola on Twitter. Thanks so much for coming through. You can find all my work over at Canal Street Chronicles on Locked On NFL and here with you every single Monday through Friday on Locked On Saints. Now, Today's episode of Locked on Saints is brought to you by our friends over at On Location, the official hospitality partner of the NFL and the only place to get a once in a lifetime Super Bowl ticket and entertainment experience. Go and check them out on location exp.com slash SB56 for more information or just simply search Super Bowl on location. Now, the New Orleans Saints are dealing with a lot throughout this season. Uh, Hurricane Ida, the loss of several coaches on the coaching staff week two, several injuries. And now to add to the list, unfortunately, head coach Sean Payton has been added to the COVID-19 list after testing positive, And because of that, will not be available this Sunday up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, for full transparency, a lot of the situation is moving very quickly. There are a lot of questions, a lot of concerns, and a lot of things being considered in terms of how the NFL plans to handle this weekend and what the New Orleans Saints will need to do. That's my disclaimer for right now, as things might be changing. I'll keep you up to date throughout the show, but we're going to focus on the Saints here moving forward. What do the New Orleans Saints need to do now that Sean Payton will not be available? Well, first of all, they have to identify a head coach, and they have. So for the head coaching role, all the reports are suggesting that it'll be Dennis Allen who takes over, the Saints defensive coordinator who has NFL head coaching experience, and of course has been with the New Orleans Saints since 2015. So in terms of the the, the coaching staff out there that has head coaching ability as well as Uh, experience and institutional knowledge of the New Orleans Saints doesn't really get much better than Dennis Allen. Now, Dennis Allen's head coaching time wasn't great, right? He went eight and 28 with the Oakland Raiders, but you also had, you know, terrible defenses in Oakland during that time. And and Dennis Allen has put together a really, really good defense in New Orleans, one of the top defenses in the NFL. And he's been building that since I guess you could say the 2016 season, really showing its progress starting in 2017, right? So You've been able to build something here with Dennis Allen that has been the cornerstone of what the team has done successfully so far this season. Perhaps the only thing it's consistently done successfully so far this season is what it's done over on the offensive side, with the exception of the Philadelphia Eagles game. And so if you think about what it is that the Saints do well right now, right, with the personnel that they're able to put out on the field, Dennis Allen is probably the best choice in terms of, you know, beyond Sean Payton. You can maintain a run game with a guy that's a defensive-minded coach, not a problem, and you're going to be able to maintain your defense with a defensive-minded head coach in this instance. So you're going to be able to do what it is that you do at your best as the New Orleans Saints. So that's good news. The big thing, you know, kind of conversation that also happened was whether or not it would be Ryan Nielsen who took that over. He is the assistant head coach and ran all of the team meetings as well as the practice when Sean Payton wasn't able to be there on Wednesday because he was feeling ill. That's another situation we'll discuss here in just a second, but the Saints ultimately look like they're going to be turning to Dennis Allen, and again, I think that's a good choice for them. Play calling is going to be a different issue over on the offensive side, but the expectation is that that will be offensive coordinator Pete Carmichael. The Saints have actually found success with Pete Carmichael when he has called plays in the past. He's not rusty. It's not like he hasn't done it in a long time. He did it just this preseason, so we'll talk a little bit more about the impact of that and what that means in terms of play calling, in terms of decision making, and what to expect with Pete Carmichael, because he's not really going to put together the greatest offense in the world, but can he maintain what the New Orleans Saints are able to do so far this season as an integral part of the person that helped to build this system that has found so much success, not only around the you know, last 15 years, but even the success that they have found so far this season on the offensive side, what is there few and far between and mostly centers around the run game, Pete Carmichael has helped to develop. He's part of the reason why that works. So we'll talk about what he brings in a moment. But with Dennis Allen at head coach, 
You're looking at maintaining the defense. You're looking at maintaining the run game and what it is that was going to keep you in this game anyway. The big question mark here really is going to be the decision making, the play calling, and when certain decisions are made, right? Situational play calling. That's going to be the big thing that you're going to lose here without Sean Payton on the sideline. And some some people may actually wonder if there's a little bit of an improvement here, right? Because a lot of folks have been critical of the decision making in certain situations, red zone play calls, third down play calls, third and short play calls, for instance. But you don't question it when it works. You only question it when it doesn't. So some of it is a little bit like overweighted, recency bias, things like that. But if you're critical of that, then you may see the New Orleans Saints potentially improve in that category. However, what seems to me to be the biggest concern here is that all the ones that you haven't had to question because the right decision was made or the decision that was made worked may not work going into this one. So then it becomes a little bit more of like the the wound being exposed in this instance. So that's the biggest concern for me. Can the Saints be effective in situational play calling, third down, third and short, um, you know, just behind just beyond the 50 yard line when you open up the opportunity for shot plays? in the red zone goal line situations, those are going to be the big ones that I'm most interested in seeing how the New Orleans Saints are able to navigate. Now, Sean Payton has been working with Dennis Allen for the past five, six years. So with that being the case, Dennis Allen is uh, knowledgeable of what it is that Sean Payton would do when nor- you usually do in situations. So mostly you'll look to just replicate what it is that Sean Payton does, but there might be a time every now and then to where Dennis Allen says, I'm going to make a different choice here. And that could either be something that is equivalent to what we watch on Thursday Night Football, where you go for it on five fourth downs and cost your team the game like Brandon Staley did, in my opinion. But then also the other piece of it is that it might lead to more conservative decisions in certain issues. Whether that's for better or for worse depends upon the game situation. We'll have to see how it all unfolds. The next big question here is, does it stop at Sean Payton, right? This thing. I mean, we, we'll look at what we've seen around the NFL so far when it comes to COVID, right? We have seen spikes we have seen waves, we have seen teams be absolutely decimated so far across the NFL. So fingers are crossed here that somehow, some way, this stops at Sean Payton. And of course, paramount to anything else, we hope that anybody that's dealing with this right now, Sean Payton, otherwise, listeners, everybody, right? Anyone that's dealing with this right now is safe and is healthy. And we hope that for head coach Sean Payton. But the idea here is he was back at practice on Wednesday. I mean, I mean excuse me, on Thursday after being ill on Wednesday. Now he tested negative on Wednesday, but now he's tested positive. So where is the bridge here, right? Where is the gap? So that's going to be the big question is, does this end up impacting the New Orleans Saints even more? Does it impact them on Saturday right before the game? Does it impact them at all until after the game? And then what do we see there? So we'll see exactly how this all ends up playing out, but hopefully Sean Payton as well. Hopefully he's feeling okay. And hopefully this stops somehow or another and remains contained. The Saints have had some issues here recently with Cam Jordan and Ty Montgomery and uh, Mark Ingram, but it has stayed there. Sean Payton was the first NFL personnel to even test positive. It was over the course of the offseason before last season. And then so it, it stinks to see him having to battle this here again. And so the New Orleans Saints, who are not unfamiliar with adversity at all this season, looking at another form of it here before they take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on Sunday night. Next up, we're going to talk a little bit more about Pete Carmichael. What has he done in the past and what does it mean for the New Orleans Saints moving forward? We've got that and much more coming up for you on today's episode of Locked on Saints. And I want to remind you about our friends over at On Location before we get there. Uh, Super Bowl 56 over at SoFi is less than 100 days away. And On Location, the official hospitality partner of the NFL, is the one and only place to get your once-in-a-lifetime Super Bowl tickets and experience package. So you're going to be able to select your exact seats. No matter where it is that you pick, that's actually where you're going to sit. They're not just going to shove you somewhere that's open. Uh, You get to pick your exact seats, and you get to choose from a bunch of elite experiences during uh, the Super Bowl week as well, including a pregame celebration with NFL legends. You get five-star LA hotels and food by the great Wolfgang Puck. So go ahead and visit onlocationexp.com slash SB56 for more information or simply search Super Bowl on location. Once again, that's onlocationexp.com slash SB56 or search Super Bowl on location. And also I want to tell you about our friends over at Stat Hero as well. Look, I stink when it comes to season long fantasy football. Uh, I have trouble keeping up with it. I'm a very busy person, but I love fantasy football. So I want to be able to play and Stat Hero has made that 
uh, available for me in a format that I really, really like because it's a first of its kind approach to daily fantasy sports uh, platforms. This one with Stat Hero gives you the daily fantasy sports rhythm and, and cadence where you reselect players constantly, but it does it in such a way that kind of blends the traditional fantasy football to where you actually know what you're going up against, as opposed to going up against millions of lineups that you can't see. You're being you're able to select specifically the lineup you want to go head to head against, and that has increased wins by four times, making the odds four times better when you play over on Stat Hero. Who doesn't love winning? So go and check it out. You can even pick you know different lineups that are quarterback only, running back only, things like that, and go up against those similar lineups. Like right now, there's a quarterback only lineup that that features Matt Stafford, Tom Brady, and Jimmy Garoppolo. So if you can pick three quarterbacks or some configuration of three quarterbacks that you think would beat that lineup. You can. That's all that it takes. So go and check them out. You can sign up for free today right now by heading over to stathero.com slash locked on and use the promo code locked on for a 100% deposit match. That is stathero.com slash locked on with promo code locked on for that 100% deposit match. Once again, stathero.com slash locked on promo code locked on terms and conditions apply. All right, family. Thanks again for making Locked on Saints your first listen of the day. This is a big day here for New Orleans Saints, New Orleans Saints fans, and across the NFL. We're already starting to see some schedule changes that are breaking down. We'll cover those here in just a little bit. I'm going to let these continue to maybe pile on and get the most in-depth and up-to-date information for you as we go through. But I want to focus right now on Pete Carmichael, what it means if Pete Carmichael ends up being your play caller for this game, which is sort of the expectation. I don't know that it's official yet, but that's that's the expectation. Now, again, Pete Carmichael is somebody that has called plays for the New Orleans Saints before, but majority of since 2006 has been Sean Payton. So where are the times that you've seen Pete Carmichael call plays? Well, in the preseason, he usually calls plays there, but also the end of the 2011 season, the 2011 playoffs, and of course, the 2012 season when Sean Payton was suspended after all of the bounty gate uh, funniness. So how did the Saints fare during that time? And of course, we have to caveat this with the fact that Drew Brees was the starting quarterback for all of these games. But the the main point here that I want you to take away from it is that Pete Carmichael does a great job maintaining Sean Payton's approach. That's the big takeaway here. So when I go over all of these numbers, it's not about the New Orleans Saints being able to produce these numbers up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It's can he maintain Sean Payton's philosophy and call a game similar in cadence and in rhythm and, and everything that these New Orleans Saints are used to from hearing from Sean Payton, can he maintain that to make them the most competitive that they can be under this situation, which creates a lot of pressure? So in 2011, when Pete Carmichael called the last nine plays of the season before getting to the playoffs, the last nine regular season games, they went eight and one with him as the play caller. They averaged over those nine games, 31.9 points per per game. Um, Over the two playoff games where they scored 36 and 45 points, that was an average of 38.8 points per game in the playoffs in 2011 before the um, division round uh, playoff loss. And then the 2012 season, uh, they averaged 28.8 points per game over the course of a full 16 game schedule in which he called plays. Now, of course, they finished the season that year only seven and nine, but they had the third best offense in the NFL in terms of scoring and the second best offense in terms of yardage at 410.9 yards per game. The bad side of that was that the defense was 31st in points allowed and 32nd in yards allowed total. So that becomes you know a big reason why 2012 didn't work out amongst other reasons. So now am I trying to say that the New Orleans Saints are going to go out there and put up these numbers against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? No, but the fact that P. Carmichael has been able to step into Sean Payton's play calling responsibilities and produce 33.2 points per game just goes to show you that he's able to maintain this offense and be an effective play caller as the person that knows the system best behind only Sean Payton himself. And you might have been able to put Drew Brees ahead of Pete Carmichael, but I would almost make the argument that Pete Carmichael knew the offense better than Drew (laughs) along with Sean Payton because Carmichael has been a big part of why this New Orleans Saints team has been effective. I mean, Sean Payton has his hands in everything across this team and has to split his attention in so many different ways. But Pete Carmichael is the one that day in and day out installs this offense. He installed the offense with Drew, with Teddy, with Jameis, and now he'll do it with Taysom. I mean, and has been doing it with Taysom. This isn't a situation to where somebody who has been completely hands off of the offense is now stepping in 
and calling plays. Like if Dennis Allen, right, were to step into the head coaching role and then for whatever reason also call plays on offense, probably wouldn't go so great. But with Pete Carmichael, who has helped to create this offense, develop this offense, teach this offense, install this offense, and run this offense, you can feel a little bit more comfortable in the idea that he'll be able to produce a game similar to what Sean Payton would produce as a play caller. Now, there are going to be certain things that just aren't going to go as well. There are going to be certain things that might work better. We don't know. But Sean Payton is one of the genius minds across the NFL, and it's going to be very hard to completely replicate that. But if you can get 90%, 80% of Sean Payton out of Pete Carmichael as a play caller, then you're at least in a situation where you're putting yourself in the position to be the most competitive. Again, I'm not trying to say that Pete Carmichael is going to go out here and call a game to where the Saints put up 410 total yards and score 33 points or anything like that. Like it's, It would be unreasonable to have that expectation, and that would be unfair to Pete Carmichael and this New Orleans Saints offense. The Saints offense is hurt. They might not have their starting tackles again because both Teron Armstead and uh, Ryan Ramchick did not participate in Wednesday or Thursday's practice. We'll learn more later on as the Friday injury report comes out with game designations. And of course, they're down their starting quarterback and they're down to only the second start of the season or third start of the season, excuse me, for Taysom Hill. So it's not going to be easy. It's not like he's just going to step in and this is all going to go great and fine and dandy. There are going to be the moments, right, that are going to happen. There are going to be the mistakes. But at least he gives you what it is that Sean Payton was able to give you to the maximum extent that he can. That isn't by any means a full on deficiency. It doesn't make play calling a liability for the New Orleans Saints because Pete Carmichael knows how this offense is supposed to work, what you're supposed to do situationally, and what Sean Payton would do in certain situations. Now, he might actively make a different decision, right? Because he's his own person and he's able to do that, but he's able to at least replicate as much of this offense as anybody else would be able to outside of maybe having Drew show up to call plays, right? So with all of that being the case, You can have a little bit of faith here in Pete Carmichael in terms of being able to call a game that feels familiar, call a game that maximizes the talent that is available. The issue will be, can they execute? Are they able to do it? Do they have the drive? Do they have the situational stuff? All the extra stuff that Sean Payton gives you, right? The fire off the field. And hopefully Dennis Allen is able to give you that and set the tone for these New Orleans Saints. But Pete Carmichael, not a liability in this situation. All right, coming up next, we're going to dive into what else is going on around the NFL, how that potentially affects the New Orleans Saints, and we'll also talk a bit about what this means moving forward. Can the Saints get Sean Payton back in time for their game up against the Miami Dolphins? We'll tell you why 24 hours makes all the difference. Continuing on with today's episode here in just a moment, but first, I want to tell you about our friends over at betonline.ag. The line is definitely going to move when it comes to this Saints and uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers game, but you might want to jump in on it as it continues to open up around this whole situation. Right now, the Saints are uh, looking it up here for you. 11-point underdogs in this game. They could potentially open that up a little bit more as well. I caught it at the first 11 uh, points. Now, you might be interested in getting in on these 11 points. We'll see how it goes. But regardless, BetOnline is the place that you should do it uh, and get in on all of your sports action. It remains the number one spot for all of the sports action this season. And you can head over to the new and updated mobile site as well as desktop website, get in on some of the live betting stuff that they've got. And if you're a first time customer, you can get a 50% welcome bonus with the promo code locked on, L O C K E D O N. Just enter that to receive that bonus from basketball to football to the NHL, boxing, UFC, and even your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers for the available and the rest of the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. It's bet online, your online sportsbook experts. And while Bet Online is your favorite place for all of your sports, Built.com should be your favorite place for the best tasting protein bars on the market. The protein bar that tastes like a candy bar while you're enjoying all of your delicious holiday treats. Don't forget to stock your stuff your stockings. I almost said stock your stuffings. Stuff your stockings with Built Bar, the perfect stocking stuffer. For the season, I'm pretty sure Santa Claus would like some Built Bars, so you can leave those out with a nice glass of milk, all that good stuff. But Built is Built.com is the place to go to get them. You get the best of both worlds with these guys. They are delicious and they are healthy. Six, seven grams of sugar with 17, 18 grams of protein. Doesn't get any better than that, giving you all that extra fuel that you need before a workout, after a workout. If you've got a long commute, need to stay awake on the road, Built Bars got you covered. These are all of the fantastic flavors that are out there as well, including mint brownie, peanut butter brownie, 
uh, cookies and cream. Shout out to Brittany. I know that's her favorite flavor. So go and check them out over at built.com. Don't forget to use the promo code LOCK15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, and get 15% off of your next order. That's promo code LOCK15 over at built.com. Let's get it. Who that nation continuing on with today's episode of Locked on Saints. Thanks as always for being here with us covering this big news around Sean Payton, the New Orleans Saints, and what it means for them moving forward. So let's talk a little bit about what's happening around the rest of the NFL. Uh, but before we do that, I want to let you know Mark Ingram returned to practice on uh, Friday. So he is back, it looks like, off of the COVID-19 reserve list himself. Uh, but I will tell you that Malcolm Jenkins, Ron Armstead, Ryan Ranchick, not seen, according to Cat Terrell, during the open portion of practice today. Uh, I'm just looking forward to see if there are any other Num- uh, any other names that you might be interested in. Low Jordan Humphrey, also not seen at practice per our friend Brooke Kirchhofer, who is with us for our WWL Wednesday. Now, what's going on around the NFL? Well, now we get a Monday night double header, it looks like. They're going to be moving the Raiders and Browns game from Sunday to Monday, giving an extra day there, hopefully be able to get more players healthy and moving forward. But the NFL is looking at potentially moving three games at uh, at, it, it, in total, uh, potentially here. So there's conversation that Philly and Washington football team game, which Saints fans should have a vested interest in because those are two of the teams that are tied with the Saints at six and seven at the bottom of the NFC playoff race. Looks like that could be moved to Tuesday night. And there are also some conversations around moving uh, Seahawks and Raven, uh, excuse me, Rams due to all of the COVID-19 concerns. That's a that, that's a, another one that Saints fans will want to keep an eye out on because if the Saints were to drop this game and fall up against the Buccaneers, and fall to six and eight, and Seattle wins against Los Angeles, then they would also move up to six and eight. And then so they create some tiebreaker situations there, along with some other teams that could potentially fall to six and eight or rise to six and eight over the course of this week. If it was just the Saints and the Seahawks, not a problem because the Saints hold the head to head tiebreaker there. But if it ends up being three or more teams, then the tiebreakers become a little bit more convoluted. So that's where we are so far. But now I want to look ahead for the New Orleans Saints. And talk about how quickly they could potentially get Sean Payton back, assuming that the Saints game still happens on Sunday, uh, which seems likely at this point, um, uh, unless there's a you know greater outbreak or anything like that. If that were to happen, then can the Saints get Sean Payton back before their week 16 matchup up against the Miami Dolphins? And 24 hours makes a big difference in this situation. Sean Payton going on the list on Friday and the Saints and Vikings game, excuse me, Saints and Dolphins game not being until Monday could be exactly what they need to get Coach Payton back for Monday's game up against the Dolphins. Now, the tricky part here is going to be getting him back for practice or any portion of practice or anything at that point. If you look at Cam Jordan, he went on the list early last week, took him about nine days to get back to the team on Thursday of this week. So if you look at nine days from today, if you don't count today, you're looking at next Sunday, which is a big deal because if they would have only gotten him back on Sunday, he might not have been able to be a part of that game and on the sideline. So getting him back on Sunday for the Monday game makes a big difference for the New Orleans Saints. The big issue is that you might not have him during practice, but at least you could get him back before the next game on the sideline, which would be huge for this team. So the New Orleans Saints, again, no stranger to adversity and no other team in the NFL seems to be built Uh, as well against adversity than the New Orleans Saints. But at some point, you just have to say, can we stop? Can this stop, please? Uh, So that this team could just have like a nice ride to roll to ride out the season. So look, we'll be here on Monday to cover a New Orleans Saints win, a New Orleans Saints loss, whatever happens. Uh, We'll be here to cover it after the Sunday night game uh, going into the Monday episode. So thanks as always for being here with us and making us your first listen of the day. For your second listen, make sure you go and check out Locked on bets, win yourself some money with your book, you and handicapping expert, Lee Sterling. Lots going on around the New Orleans Saints. If you want to keep up with it all between these episodes, make sure you follow me on Twitter at Ross Jackson, N-O-L-A. Hit me up. Let me know how the family's doing. Let me know how you're living. Let me know how you're mom and them. And trust you, that nation. I'll holler at you.